Never in a million years saw that coming. But it's true. It is absolutely true. Mining engineer Jack Grappo is talking about the surprising fact that the future of renewable energy, like wind turbines and solar panels, relies on rare earth elements and coal. That's where the rare earth elements are, and they need those for those technologies. So once again, we see that the coal is a tangible, compatible um, partner, not only in the load distribution for generation as a fuel resource, but actually providing the raw materials to generate the technology in the first place. China has a, a virtual monopoly on the world supply of rare earth elements. It's an opportunity for growth. It's a necessity for, really, for security. I mean, if you're going to have something that's going to be very vital to all sorts of industries, not just the consumer-based electronics industries, but the defense-based industries, uh, it's important to have some control over the, the means of production. It's fine for us to you know, buy our cell phones from China, but it's different for defense technology. So it becomes of strategic importance. And Jim Hauer was actually the one that gets credit for the first journal reference to it. Back in the early 1990s, uh, Cortland Ebel uh, with the Kentucky Geological Survey and I did a lot of sampling in the fire clay coal bed in eastern Kentucky, which turns out to be the, really the premier coal-based resource for rare earth elements. About 2010 or so, it started to become more critical and U.S. agencies like Defense and Energy started to take particular interest in making sure that the U.S. had more of a basic supply and more manufacturing and processing based in the U.S. rather than relying solely on imports. The type of information that we had gathered over the years became very important to mesh with this new interest. With funds from DOE, DOD, and NSF, Jim Hauer and Jack Grappo are locating and evaluating rare earth elements and processing coal-based materials alongside industry and university partners. I think potentially the best resource is probably in the fly ash and other coal combustion products because the coal has already been burned, it's already, it's already been mined, it's in a fine state. Fly ash is a residual um, material left over after burning coal. We produce 140 million tons a year in the United States and we utilize about half of it. It's actually quite usable in um, construction products, particularly um, concrete. So we began a series of projects back in the uh, mid-1990s to process the fly ash. It was a very steep learning curve at first because we don't have any specific experience in rare earth elements, but you know, as a mining engineer, mineral processing engineer, we process minerals. We remove contaminants to very small levels using physical processes. It's directly applicable to what we're trying to do to enrich the rare earth elements to eventually recover them. It's no different than a gold ore or a copper ore, except that it may potentially be more valuable. The question is, can this be done continuously? Yes, it certainly can. Can it be done economically? Um, that depends. And it all depends on what is there and what the market price is for those elements. We're dealing with materials that you sell by the kilo not by the ton uh, or by the gram. They're not commonly found um, sitting there associated with an ore, which is easy to recover. That's what makes them so valuable. I don't think it would ever make any sense to go after just rare earth elements. That, that doesn't make any sense economically, but if you can go after the rare earth elements as a byproduct of going after something else, that that makes sense. And again, that's sustainable. Our job here is to find the resource, process the resource, generate 10 tons of processed fly ash, which we do in our pilot plant, ship it to our partner. They will do the leaching and the solvent extraction. And when they're done with the material, send the leached residue back to us, and then we'll evaluate it for its applicability for use in concrete. And if you're really lucky in your career, you may have one opportunity to see something from the idea stage through commercialization. Maybe because I'm working in an area that nobody else wants to work, dealing with other waste. I've had the chance to do that five or six times. 
which is tremendous. It's a tremendous opportunity. And I think we have no chance here for the dual purpose of actually recovering important elements and then utilizing a waste stream in a value-added way. Instead of throwing it away, we're going to recycle it. Because when you extract the rare earth elements from fly ash, give the fly ash back to us and we will use it to make concrete. So there's no waste from this process if we do this right. And sustainability and mining don't normally go hand in hand. Um, this is a great opportunity to actually do that.